Alpine country of Austria lies the village of Pieber, home of the Lipizzan horses. The Lipizzan breed had its beginning in 1580 during the reign of Maximilian II. And from that time until the end of the empire, the white horses served the crown. Today, they belong to the people of Austria, cherished as a living symbol of times that were splendid, but that are gone and will not return. In the autumn of their third year, when the Lipizzaners are turning from dark to white, the finest stallions are selected for the famous Spanish riding school in Vienna. Named for the Spanish origin of the Lipizzan horses, the school was built in 1735, when every court in Europe patronized the art of classical riding. Today, it is the only home of that art in the world. It has survived wars and occupations, crowns and republics. But near the end of the Second World War, it was almost lost. In the spring of 1945, a great adventure began for the White Horses of Vienna.
Telheim. This is a pleasant surprise. Colonel Podaisky, you remember General Stryker? Yes, of course. I remember the general very well. Uh, forgive me for not calling my staff to attention, but a military atmosphere in the hall would disturb the concentration necessary in our training. I see. General Stryker arrived only this morning, and one of his first inquiries was of the Spanish Riding School. We're honored. I'm a great admirer of Fiore Pizzanas. I always make it a point to see them on my visits to Vienna. Then you must attend tomorrow's performance. It's our first in several months. So I understand. But what happened here, Colonel Podaisky? Happened, General? Yes, it doesn't look the same. Wasn't there a portrait of Charles VI above the gallery? And I remember some magnificent chandeliers. I had them removed. Did you have orders to do that, Colonel? I gave the Colonel permission to take certain precautionary measures. These things are irreplaceable. I was anxious for their safety. Oh, I see. Anxious for their safety. Mind your anxiety also explain the number of empty stalls in your stable, Colonel. I did send some of the younger stallions to the country. You made a request to Berlin, asking permission to move the Spanish riding school out of Vienna. Yes, some time ago. That request was denied. Yes, it was. I was very disappointed. So disappointed that you chose to ignore those instructions? If I'd chosen to ignore them, none of us would be here. The horses I sent away were still in training. They were not yet school performers. You made decisions that contradict the spirit of orders from the Fuhrer. Vienna is in no danger. Life has to continue as usual here. You can't honestly That's believe... That's an order. The Spanish riding school papers. You have a number of riders on leave from the army. They are to be returned to active service immediately. You want the riding school to continue, and yet you take my staff away from me? Men are needed at the front. General Schreiker, the basis of the school is in its training. I sympathize with your problems, Colonel. But the war is fast reaching a climax. And I tell you in confidence that it will not be easy. If Germany is to win, some sacrifice will be required by everyone. I'm looking forward to tomorrow's performance. Alan. should kick you for giving him such confused signals. And then kick me for allowing you in this hall. It wasn't you he was shouting at. You were only a substitute. Will you check my work? If I'm doing something wrong, I want to be corrected. Yes. Something wrong? Yes. Something's wrong. What is it? I don't permit childish outbursts of emotion to interrupt training in the riding hall. And who is having childish outbursts? I am. I sent myself away. I shouted at a young rider. You should have heard me. He's a conscientious boy, too, one of the best. Well, if he's one of the best, he'll survive your temper. Come and have some coffee. I must remember to praise him tomorrow. How can the Nazis be so stupid? Are they now believing their own ridiculous propaganda? Aha, uh -huh, the Nazis. Yes, the Nazis, always the Nazis. I feel there have been Nazis all my life. The school should be closed. I should be evacuating it from the city right now, and there should be no one in Berlin to stop me. You can ask to leave the city and keep asking. That's all you can do. You are in the army. And the school is under military control, and that's that. Is the opera run by the army or the symphony? Well, perhaps Vienna will be spared after all. I, 
Like Paris has been spared. I must prepare to leave Vienna. On my own, if necessary. No, Louis. You mustn't even think of it. I have to do whatever I can to assure the survival of the school. What of your own survival? The school was my responsibility before there were Nazis giving orders in Austria, and it remains my responsibility. But there are My limits. first responsibility. I'll keep trying to get permission and pray they come to their senses, but if they still won't listen to no. me and time runs no, out... No, I don't even want to hear this. Verena, I want you to understand. Europe is going to split wide open, and only those people who are ready to do something, who have a, a plan and the courage to use it, will have a chance to save something of their lives. The school is my life and my obligation. I can't turn from it, forget it out of fear. Think about it, Verena, as I have thought about it. You do understand. I do. I do. But I don't want to. Louis, promise me. You won't risk yourself unless it's the only way, until it's a last desperate resort. Don't forget, you are my life. Only you. Beautiful wine, just beautiful. Oh, this one knows, he knows good wine. With you for an uncle, how could I help it? <laughs> I'm going back to my old outfit, the one I left years ago. I'll think I'll have a nice time seeing them all again. If any of them are left. Ooh, that's a fine way to talk. Yes, nice and cheerful. Drink up, everybody. After a few glasses, everything will be nice and cheerful. And before you know it, We'll have Anna volunteering to go along to the front. Well, I've already been thinking about that. After all, you'll need somebody to wipe your noses for you. Yes, um, <laughs> it's such an honor for me. Good evening, Anna. Please sit at the head of the table and see how the wine suits you. It's a good year for wine. Glad to hear that. Good evening. Every year is good for something. If we only look, you're right here, Anna. Huh? Me, it's perfect. <laughs> Why are we all standing? Sit down, please. Colonel Podaisky, I'd like to propose a toast. When we first came to the Spanish Riding School three years ago, you said we'd be expected to give the best that was in us, that you would settle for no less. And as time passed, we saw that you meant it. It was difficult because I don't think any of us knew what the best in us was or even where to look for it. But you kept demanding until you made us find it. And for that we thank you. Because we can take it with us now, wherever we go. Post. 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 You were sent to the writing school under orders. I want to ask you if you wanted to go there, and I wasn't given much choice either. But the writing school is lucky. It would have to be, you know, to still be around after so many years. If I had been allowed to go through the entire cavalry myself, unit by unit, to find a staff, I couldn't have done better. Those of you who remain here will have to work 
harder than ever. Those who are returning to active service will, I'm sure, be a credit to your units. We'll miss you. Good luck. They're good boys. Going off to war so uselessly at this point. Up, uh, Lewis. <laughs> Sorry, it's a party. We need auto. Yes. Yeah. 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 So come on, please. Come on. Please, come on. Oh, I need to have a second in the Come on. 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 Come Just say Auf Wiedersehen Tonight Don't say goodbye And don't despair I know that we Will meet again somewhere Our dreams will still something very gay. Come on, Uncle, bring some more wine, please. I do for you, Colonel Podolsky? I have a request to make. I want permission to evacuate the Spanish riding school immediately. Your request has been denied. But that was before. That was this morning. I've been in contact with Berlin. But why would they deny it? Last month was one thing, even last week, but now. The Spanish riding school is a symbol of Vienna. Its evacuation might be interpreted by the Viennese as a sign that their situation is regarded as hopeless that the city is doomed. It's an extravagant sacrifice, General Stryker, and I don't believe the Viennese people can be so easily fooled. It's not my place, Colonel, to question the decisions of higher headquarters. I have a responsibility, General. Indeed, the responsibility of any man in uniform to obey orders.
Hayretle. General Tellheim. Do you have an appointment, Colonel? No, I do not. The General is very... It's busy. urgent. I want to report a plot on General Stryker's life. to my orderly. I was very impressed with you. You know, he stutters when he's impressed. It isn't difficult to impress people these days. You just talk very loud and have an unpleasant manner. Did you impress General Stryker? No, he's an exception. Request denied. Any request, all requests. I'm sorry. I, I can't believe such waste, such stupidity. Well, don't tell me what you think. Don't tell anyone. These are not times for saying what you think. Forgive my temper. The school mayors were moved to Czechoslovakia for reasons I never understood. I can't predict what will happen to them there. Now air raids endanger my stallions and I refuse permission to save them. It's, it's as if the end of the Spanish riding school had been deliberately planned and is being carried out on, on some secret schedule from higher headquarters. I don't know how to be polite and patient any longer. Ah, I only wish I could call Berlin and accomplish something for you. But since the attempt on Hitler's life, there have been too many changes. I have no friends left there. I know. Thanks for listening to me again. Now, just a second. Some time ago, I gave you orders to take certain art treasures out of the school to safety. Those orders have not been rescinded. Can you help me with transportation? Where would you like to take these treasures? To St. Martin in the Inkreis. There's plenty of stable space in the castle there. Uh, perfect for storing art treasures. Railroad cars are scarce, but I see what I can do. And I'll send you some trucks. Or wagons if trucks are scarce. My Lippitz honors will help me with this evacuation. I'll give you what help I can. And then it's up to you. You know, I could be setting a trap for you. I'm willing to take that chance. Careful, my friend. Colonel, you want me to wait for you? Now, you go ahead with the trucks and these wagons. I'll come with the rest. We'll meet you at the railroad station. Got a copy of the orders in case you get stopped? Yes, but uh, I'm hoping we don't have to use them. Those field police. They make me nervous. Good luck.
We are ready to go, Colonel. What's going on here? I'm Colonel Patiski of the Spanish Riding School. Take a look in those wagons, all of them. I'm evacuating valuable equipment and art treasures from the Riding School. We're on our way to the railroad yard. You have orders? Signed by the Area Defense Commander. Your wife? Yes. She helps you with evacuations? I don't like to leave her alone. Why do you have horses tied behind your wagons, Colonel? These are show animals. They're not used to pulling loads. I brought extra horses for relief. Furniture, paintings, some saddles and harnesses. What you are doing is very dangerous, Colonel Podaisky. I realize that. I'd hate to see these beautiful animals caught in a ray. You'd better move on and go quickly. Thank you. Trains going out. There's been heavy damage on the western line. Not hopeless, Otto. Never hopeless. Where is he? He's over here. Come with me. Clear track seven now. I'm Colonel Patiski. Move them. Push them over if you have to. Burn them, but move them. I have transportation orders. I told you it's impossible. You didn't tell me anything. Well, it's still impossible. But I have orders. <laughs> Who hasn't? You won't get rid of me, I promise you. Colonel Podaisky, I have a hundred orders I cannot fill. All of them urgent. Soldiers, equipment. And you want a car for odd objects. I want six cars. Six? I can't leave until you help me. Colonel, I'm a very busy man. My concern is not for myself, it's for the horses. Horses? Your orders, Colonel Podaisky, cover the transportation of certain treasures. And what are the treasures of the Spanish Riding School, the real treasures? That's not for me to decide, Colonel. I can't help you. Or your horses. Are you Austrian? Yes, I'm Austrian. Then they're as much your horses as they are mine. Please, Colonel, don't try to use sentiment on me. There's no place for sentiment these days. Not sentiment, hard reality. Something irreplaceable is in danger of being destroyed. Colonel Podaisky, you're going to force me to telephone the police. Children? Yes, they are my children. Very handsome. Such an eager look, as if they know that tomorrow will be a good day. Are they here in Vienna? No, I've sent them away. Out of danger. Good. I'm relieved. Colonel Podaisky, I must ask you again. Have they seen the Lippets on horses? Yes, they've seen the horses. They love the horses. I love the horses. Why wouldn't you take no for an answer? You're putting me into a terrible position. 
I look at my desk and I, I see a hundred orders I cannot fill. But you make me also see the faces of my children. Well, there's some things that a man should never lose sight of. Sleep, Lewis. When we get to St. Martin. Easy, boy. Oh, now. Blaine! Passing on by. You are so stubborn sometimes. You taught me. so quiet here, it makes me nervous. We're used to noise now. Where's Otto? He went for a walk. He was born here in Linz. Until a few days ago, the war was just radio reports and a few inconveniences. And suddenly, now... And it still seems unreal to me. Coming back, but there's nothing left. We're left. Slaughtered like sheep. Until I get orders to move out. That's how long. Well, it's not a very safe place. Where do you get your orders from? From everybody and his dog. And I'm getting pretty tired of it, too. And topple and pull out! And topple and pull out! We're not going to stop until they bomb this place off the map. It's murder to leave us here. Oh, we can't risk an engine. What are you waiting for? I didn't bring the Spanish riding school all the way to Linz to have it destroyed. The Spanish riding school is on my train? Four cars of us. My wife and I went to see your beautiful white horses on every trip to Vienna. Are you crazy? It's a raid, and you are talking about horses. Uncouple and pull out. But you can't just leave us here. I 
Otto, we've got to get the horses out of here. Where will we go? I don't know. Any... He's taking us with him. He's taking us with him. What are you doing? Stop! I'm telling you to stop! Oh, stop! During the last weeks of the war, the castle of St. Martin was a refuge for hundreds of homeless, frightened people, and for the Spanish Riding School of Vienna. The days were long with waiting. Fighter with the hands. some blankets. And a saddle. Help! Don't kill me! Someone help! Be quiet. Nobody's hurting you. My wife and child are freezing. What could I do? Freezing? In this weather? It's cold at night. We have to sleep on the ground. And a saddle keeps you warm? See if anything else is missing. I wanted some blankets. A man has to take care of his family. Yeah, my children are freezing. A moment ago, you only had one child. You shouldn't bully poor people. You're not needed here. There's a pistol missing. I didn't take any pistol. I swear, I don't know anything about the pistol. Search me. Go on, get out. All of you. <laughs> Better keep a guard here from now on, day and night. Set up some kind of a signal system. They'll steal everything we've got to use for barter. Yes, I'll make up a roster. Give each guard a rifle and a clip of ammunition. Don't forget someone out there has a pistol. <laughs> stables. What did you do with him? Let him go. What could I do? Turn him over to the authorities? I'm a fugitive from authority. And we couldn't wait to reach the safety of St. Martin. Colonel Podaisky, an army car. 
like we're going to have a very important visitor. We better go upstairs. Lois, aren't you coming? No. Well, is there any reason to draw attention to yourself? I'm going outside to say hello. Can't believe my eyes. What brings you to St. Martin? I brought permission for you to finally evacuate Vienna. How quickly do you think you can accomplish such a move? <laughs> What a pleasure to see you. General Telheim, do come in. You were right, Louis. A very important visitor indeed. Oh, Countess, allow me to present General Telheim. The Countess very generously opened the doors of her home to us. In honor? General Telheim is a dear friend from Vienna. Welcome to St. Martin, General. His visit is a happy surprise for us. How did you manage to get away from your office? Everything is confusion these days. I don't think I'll even be missed. <laughs> In that case, you must stay for dinner. Oh, I don't want to impose. I insist. I'll see to arrangements. Thanks. Come along, Carl. What a lovely woman. Yes, and next to yourself, the busiest person in Austria. I see she has quite a population here. I can't even count the number of refugees who come through St. Martin every week, and she nurses and advises and worries over them. Where's her husband? In the army? No, he disagreed with the authorities. He's in a concentration camp. Oh, I see. Well, come in, come in. Please, sit down. Tell us what's been happening to you. Don't pretend with me. What you really want to know is what has happened to the riding school. Is it so easy to see through me? Oh, the hall is still standing. It looks the same. I am happy to see you. I'm happier every minute. How beautiful. Thank you. It was my pleasure. I don't often get the chance to play anymore. You know, we, we have just broken the law. <laughs> yes, the music of Mendelssohn is forbidden. I'd forgotten. Of course you had. Who can remember such things? Who? Brain is superb. And the wine's with dinner. <laughs> I'm not accustomed anymore to such good things. In Vienna, they're all gone. Or very well hidden. We dug them up, General. Literally, from under the floor of the wine cellar. <laughs> and the silver and the chinaware, too. Verena and I were digging all afternoon. You went to a lot of trouble. But it's so good to have guests again. And music. I've always loved Mendelssohn. I played cradle song as a boy. What can happen to a country that causes it? to outlaw the genius of a great composer. What happens to a people that they permit themselves to be so denied? Perhaps you are being too hard on them, General. It doesn't happen overnight, this condition. It develops slowly and 
so subtly that people don't realize what's being done. Yes. And suddenly it's all there. And then it's too late to fight back. At least, that's what the weak people say. No, I, I think you're being too kind. The strong people fight in spite of everything. They risk themselves for what they believe in. I admire them. I... I envy them. Whatever happens to them. Yeah. No, I think I must go. It was a wonderful evening. For a while, I completely lost track of time. Not only what hour, but what year. Thank you for that. I thank you. It was worth more than I can tell you. I hope we're going to see you again. Think of me sometime. You don't have to ask. Now I would like to see my beautiful Lipizzanas once more. Of course. Goodbye. <laughs> and Carl thought he was announcing an enemy. General Telheim, you've done so much for the school already, I'm embarrassed to ask more of you, but I'm terribly worried about my mares in Czechoslovakia. I wonder if there isn't something can be done before it's too late. It's already too late. Save your appeal for the conquerors. I brought very bad news with me. I've postponed telling it for selfish reasons. It's been such a pleasant visit. What news? The Hungarian riding school fled Budapest, but was captured by the Russians on the outskirts of Vienna. The outskirts? The fall of Vienna is imminent. It may have happened since I left. What happened to Haslinski and his horses, do you know? He and his staff were taken prisoners of war. They were in uniform, and the horses were destroyed. I see. We've talked so much about the end, expecting it, waiting for it. It's still a shock when it comes. But I can do one thing for you, my last good deed. I can demilitarize the school. Might make things easier for you when the conquering forces take over. I'd be very grateful. All right, I'll send official papers to you establishing the school as a civil institution, the way it was before. You called it your last good deed. Yeah. With the fall of Germany, my life is over. I've... I've given a great deal of thought to my situation, and I've decided neither the courage nor the desire to begin over again. More than that, I've decided I don't want to be judged a Nazi. I don't want to accept the responsibility. But you were never in sympathy with Hitler. No, I sold myself to him, like many others. I'm only being faithful to a course I took years ago. A weak course then. Weak still, but my chosen one. After such a terrible winter, I think we are going to have quite a nice spring. I don't believe the Russians will come as far as St. Martin, for whatever encouragement that may be to you. I believe the Americans will come into this area. Should I expect more from them? 
Don't give up hope, my friend. You have a past to be proud of, a chance for the future. Few of us have that much. I'm sorry I had to spoil our beautiful evening with such grim reports. General Telheim, why don't you stay here for a while? I'm sure the Countess would be very happy. Take in one more refugee? No. Thank you for the thought. Well, goodbye. I hope things go well with you. tonight. We have better luck with the British broadcasts at night. I don't think they're bothering with us anymore. What do they care if we know the truth? They've won. It's all over except for some cleaning up here and there. The rain puts you in a bad mood. shoot somebody by accident. If I shoot somebody, it won't be an accident. Is there a kill under that kind face of yours? I don't believe it. Now get the horses! Quick! Get the horses! I'll shoot! today, Colonel. Besides, we're doing you a favor. I hear the Russians have a taste for horse meat. If you're running from the Russians, you're wasting your energy. The Russians aren't coming to St. Martin. That's not what I hear. I hear they're already in Vienna and moving in this direction. But where do you have to run? I tell you, you're better off staying here. I don't think you really care what's better for us, Colonel. You saw that German officer who visited here a few days ago? He came from Vienna and he told me what's going to happen. The Russians are not coming as far as St. Martin. Maybe we've listened to too many German officers. Get that horse, I'll kill you. Be careful, Colonel. I'll shoot if I have to. Everybody but my staff better get out of here. Fast! Get the horse in their stalls and stay with them. Somebody help me get out of the house. Now I am going to retire. Don't talk. That doesn't sound like thunder. It isn't thunder. It's the victors.
isn't a deep wound, thank goodness. Is it worth it, Verena? What? All our efforts, all our care. Now, I've never heard you ask that before. No, I'm stubborn. The truth is stubborn, too. Time comes when you have to see things as they are. And how are they? I'm curious to know. Just open your eyes and your ears. Here come the conquerors. They take lives and destroy tradition without a second thought. How do you know what they do, Louis? You heard what happened to the Hungarian school? That was one unit in the Russian army, that's all. Have you heard anything better about the other side? It's not the worst of it, not nearly the worst. The very people I've been trying to save the school for now threaten to destroy it. That's not true. Well, what happened today, just a few hours ago? Somebody gets hold of a gun and they're all ready to go, ready to kill me or anyone else who gets in their way and steal every stallion in the stable. Louis, there's something you must understand. There are people in this world to whom a horse is just a horse, white, black, or piebald, not a thing of, of, of beauty or culture, but just a horse, a means of transportation, or perhaps something to fill their stomachs. Well, maybe there won't be room for tradition and art in the world that comes out of this war. Maybe those things are obsolete. If they are, then so am I, obsolete. Like Telheim, a man whose time is past, whose world is gone. And if that's so, then I should know it. I should open my eyes wide and recognize it. Yes, open them. Your sight is faulty, but it isn't blindness. It's just nearsightedness. You can see a desperate group of refugees because they come near you and shout threats into your face. But where are all the others? All those Austrians who risked themselves trying to save the school? The engineer on the train that brought us here? The dispatcher at the railroad station? Otto? Sasha? You've suddenly lost sight of them? You compare yourself to Telheim? That's unfair. Poor Telheim. Nothing to hold on to. Nothing to fight for. So he gives up. But that's not you, Louis. As long as there's a chance for the school to continue, you've got to keep on fighting. You owe it to those people in the background. I have something else to hold on to besides the school. Thank you. I'm looking for Colonel Podolsky. I'm Podolsky. I have orders for you, Colonel. Orders? You are to be defense area commander, Colonel. The men of the village have been armed and await your instructions. Area commander? As the highest ranking officer. But I'm no longer in the military. I've been waiting for official papers. These are our official papers, Colonel. Yes, I see they are. I urge you to impress upon the men under your command. That the fight is not over. Any ideas of peaceable surrender to the Americans will bring severe punishment. Do you have any questions, Colonel? No. Bürgermeister Altmann will remain here for your instructions. Herr Altmann, are you any relation to the man who owns the uh, butcher shop in the village? Yes, I am to see him, Altmann. Herr Altmann, I wonder if there isn't a uh, closer danger facing us right now than those guns we hear echoing in the hills. A closer danger? Uh, 
Yes, the danger of plundering. Plundering? There are over 300 refugees here. And as those guns grow louder, they grow more restless. Now, if their fear and desperation were to reach the breaking point and they gave themselves to open riot and looting, well, you can see what would happen to all of us. Yes. Yes, I see. It might not be a bad idea if we kept our armed men close to the village just in case there is such an outbreak. What do you think? Oh, I agree with you, Colonel. I agree with you 100%. The fox. The sly fox. <laughs> He's going to get himself in trouble. Louis, I don't like what you're doing. What should I do? Send a bunch of sick and tired old men out to fight soldiers? I don't want it on my conscience. And the orders? Orders? I promise you we'll never see the Chryslider again. I am no longer in the army, with or without written confirmation. I'm through with Nazis once and for all. <laughs> Bravo! My husband used to say I play the piano like a carpenter. Bang, bang, bang. Sounds fine to me. Wait. Listen. I don't hear anything. Exactly. The guns have stopped. What do you suppose that means? Verena, bring the clothes you ordered for the staff. I think we should get out of these uniforms. Louis. Please go right now, Verena. How do I want the uniforms burned? And get rid of those rifles we have in the stable. Right away, I'd Colonel. I'd not have to explain them. Yes, sir. Isn't there something I can do? I'd like to be busy, too. I fear the world is spinning twice its normal speed tonight. And if I don't hold tightly, <laughs> I don't know what I mean. I do. I feel it, too. Before many hours have passed, a whole way of thinking and acting will end for us. And welcome or not, it's a jolt. Finally, the end. What will they be like? The Americans? I don't know. We'll find out soon enough. Hoffman, find out who these people are and who owns this place. How do you do? I'm Louis Batyski. Are you the owner? No, the Count Arco Valley is the owner. Where is he? He's not here. My husband is in a concentration camp. We'd like to inspect your home counters as a possible headquarters. We would be honored to have an American headquarters at San Martin. Will you show me through? Major Hoffman, take a look at the other buildings. Sorry, I, I, I beg your pardon. I... What is it, 
Donna, what's wrong? No, no, nothing's wrong. There's an American officer asking for you. He knows your name. Well, take me to him. I was sure it must be the same for Daisky. A Major Hoffman. Saw you ride in the 1936 Olympics. Long time ago. Yeah, well, it seems like a long time ago, but I certainly remember your performance. I'd never seen riding like that. You're very kind. These your horses? They're from the Spanish Riding School in Vienna. I read about your being made director there. That, that was before the war, wasn't it? Well, I'm still director, for whatever it's worth. Major Hoffman, we'll set up Corps headquarters here. Would you take charge of moving in the various sections? Yes, sir. We'll set up our motor pool here in the stables. There seems to be enough room. Kanaisky here. He's director of the Spanish Riding School. One of the finest horsemen in the world, sir. Famous Lipizzan stallions are here at St. Martin. How many horses do you have here, Pataisky? Seventy, sir. Handsome animals? Yes, sir. I've never seen them before myself, but it's supposed to be quite an experience. They're unique in the world. You brought them from Vienna? For their safety. Very handsome. Uh, General. Sir, the Spanish riding school is worth saving, not just for Austria, but for the world. We need your protection. I'm sorry, Pataisky. I don't believe we can survive without it. We have 70 stallions here to care for, to feed and shelter and defend. Our mares have been removed to Hostau in Czechoslovakia. If they're not returned to us, the breed will die. Pataisky, we're still trying to win a war. Once that's done, agencies will be set up to take care of requests such as yours. Forgive my impatience, sir, but those agencies may be too late. I have no authority to grant army protection to you. And as for the mayors, a line of demarcation has been drawn that American forces will not cross. That line lies on the Czechoslovakian border. The Russians will take hostile. I respect your devotion to your school. Sorry I can't help you. Well, don't give up. Not yet. I spoke too soon. I was too forward. No, you... Just don't give up. Could we have a talk? I just had a long conversation with the general. He'd like to help you, and we've got an idea. Yes, what idea? Do you think you could give a performance here at St. Martin on short notice? Performance? Yeah, you see, General Patton, commander of the Third Army, he's a, <laughs> he's a real horse lover. He rode in the 1912 Olympics. Well, if you were to take an interest in the school, he might be able to do things for you no one else could do. Even save the mares? Well, I can't make any promises, but if we invited Patton to come here, see a performance. How, how can I give a respectable show under these conditions? I, I have a small staff. The stallions are out of training. Well, if it can't be done. Well, I, I didn't say it couldn't be done. I, I only said I, I don't know how. But you're willing. Well, it's a chance, isn't it? I need a chance. Good. I'll radio Army headquarters tonight. Major Hoffman, I want to thank you. You go into a town after so many sad towns. You walk into a stable and you see something beautiful. Don't expect it. Helps you forget some of the not so beautiful things you've been seeing. Well, good night, Podaski. Colonel, anything? We're going to give a performance. A performance? Here? 
Perhaps the most important performance in the history of the school. For an American general who can help us. Oh, wonderful. When's it gonna take place? I don't know yet. Maybe a couple of days. A couple of days? Well, that's not possible. It would take weeks to get the horses ready, Colonel. I don't see how we can do it. Well, I'll tell you something. We've come too far and gone through too much to give up now. To save the school, we need the help of the Americans. And this General Patton is the one to impress. But we need time, sir. There isn't time. So we can shake our heads and throw up our hands and turn from this opportunity, and there may never be another performance anywhere. Is that what you want? Let's take this chance and thank God for it. It may be our only one. A training program will start early tomorrow morning. Very early. I suggest you get some rest. <laughs> Gets out of the sack earlier than the U.S. Army, but nobody. Two rows of seats, each one long enough for about ten men. Well, here, I'll show you the plans. Hey, what's going on here? Is it a circus or something? No, it's not a circus. It's the Spanish Riding School from Vienna. What's a Spanish Riding School doing in Austria? We got a Spanish restaurant in Brooklyn. It's the oldest riding school in the world. They certainly are beautiful horses, man. Aren't they? Want to make a friend who smile. And we're in need of friends just now. Mm -mm. Look at him sashay around. Why don't you ask him for the next dance, Cornpoon? Yeah, well, I want to tell you something. He's a whole lot lighter on his feet than a lot of the girls back home. <laughs> the director of the riding school says. He's happy for the chance to show his horses to the American liberators. He has a big job to do now, making a suitable place. But once it's done, the stallions can perform for you. Perhaps give you a happy memory of Austria to take back home. Yeah. Well, um, maybe we can help out, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Really? Oh, that would be very kind. They're going to help us. Hey, look what he's doing now. <laughs> We're freaks to them, Verena. We're sideshow performers. I don't need their help. Louis, they're young. How could they understand what the riding school means? How could they appreciate tradition? But they're willing to understand. And they're open to it. I don't have time to teach them. And I don't like their jokes. Louis, you're always talking about your responsibility to the school. You think your responsibility is just to be. But it's also to give. Verena, what are you doing? I don't want to have an argument with you, especially over such a thing as this. Such a thing as this is very important. I've heard of men in wartime who killed so long they just couldn't stop. Maybe you fought too long. And you've distrusted for too long. Just leave the coffee. We'll help ourselves. Que 
mentioned so far, I might as well have gotten to the village pump for water. You're too lazy to do that. Good morning, Verena. Good morning. Aren't the Americans wonderful? They have an absolute passion for cleanliness. Yes. Yes, wonderful. They are finding dirt that I'm sure has been in the palace for centuries. I hate to see it go. Verena, something wrong? Won't you tell me? We ask too much of our men. We ask them to have the strength and fury of giants, and then to change quickly and be again the men they were before. But we have to ask it. Isn't that true? It's our duty to them. Don't worry so much, Verena. But you see, I have to think of what will happen to him if the American general will not help him. as bad as the day we got married. Worse even. I didn't know what to expect from you. General Patton has a reputation. He's here, the big man. Good luck. Present! Up! Present! Up! Can we begin now? Oh, oh, sorry.
us. It's all right to move in closer if you want to. Go ahead. Sit down if you want to. Move in closer. seen a horse fight? He's never seen a horse before. A horse has better sense than to go any place near Brooklyn. Damn! <laughs> General, I thank you for the great honor you have shown the Spanish Writing School. This cultural institution, so deeply tied to the Austrian soil and heart, the oldest writing school in the world, has survived centuries of war and revolution. Surely the great American nation which has gone to war to save European culture from destruction will be interested in this old school which is truly a living piece of the Baroque. I believe I am doing right in asking you, General, for your special protection and help. Protection for the school and help in finding and returning the Lipizzan mayors which are now in gravest danger in Czechoslovakia. Thank you for a fine performance. Now, will you join my party for a tour of your stables? Oh, yes, sir, of course. I did. Help! Did he say yes or no? I missed it. He didn't. How long does it take you to train your horses, Potaski? Before they're ready to perform, three to four years. It's amazing to me that so much time and energy can be put into an activity of this kind in the middle of a war. We've tried to preserve our arts. Worthy idea, if you can afford it. Tell me, Potaski, you ever use the mares? No, sir, only the stallions are worked in the school. The mares are kept aside for breeding. That's why it's so necessary to get our mares out of Czechoslovakia. There are no others. The Germans moved our stud farm from Tiber some time ago over my strong protests. Well, you've done a fine job, Potaisky. My congratulations. Now, gentlemen, let's have some lunch. Well, what did he say? He said he was hungry. I see a map of Czechoslovakia. I'll get the overlay for that area, sir. Over here, sir. I received a message from the commanding officer of the 2nd Mechanized Cavalry earlier this week. He informed me of some 2,000 Allied prisoners just across the Czech border being used to take care of a large herd of horses. Excuse me, sir. That's it, sir. Well, it's across the line of demarcation, of course. But I never was much in favor of that line. I'd like to see those prisoners liberated before the Russians move in. I want a communique sent to that effect. Conditions permitting, 
Colonel Reed might bring the horses along, too. No sense letting the Russians have them. Right, sir. Hey, come! Now contact General Eisenhower. He has authority over Patton. Please have some food. I'll contact the American president. Will you please have some food? You haven't had any breakfast this morning, and you've done a show. We put on a good performance in spite of everything. Well, why did we bother? Will you why did we go to the trouble? Please have some I'm not hungry. Lewis. Verena, don't Lewis. pull at me. But I see I... Well, did General Patton get his lunch? Is he in good health? The Spanish Riding School is now under the protection of the United States Army. By order of General Patton. Second mechanized cavalry regiment's going into hostile. Congratulations. What I said before. I'm sorry, I, I was upset. Well, you asked about General Patton's health. Nothing wrong with that. When will they leave for hostile? Orders have already been sent to Colonel Reed. I'll leave tomorrow morning. Colonel Reed's official concern is 2,000 Allied prisoners, reaching them and liberating them. And of course, I'll be free to take care of any other matters that might come up. Like Lipizzan or horses, for instance. Oh, I would love to be part of it. Well, I can arrange for you to meet us at the Czechoslovakian border. Unless we run into heavy resistance, the whole operation should be completed in a few days. In a few days? Did you hear that, Verena? I hear. I hear. <laughs> of the German army. I come and answer to a message from your commander, Colonel Reed. What's the password? Cowboy. Well, you didn't say it very good, but I guess you said it. Let's go. Come on in. Oh, good evening, Major Hoffman. Hello, Colonel. Grab yourself a cup, have some coffee. Oh, thank you, sir. Any words from the Germans yet? No, not yet. I'm trying to catch up on my meals here. Seems like I'm always about three behind. Well, oh, that's a meal worth waiting for, isn't it? I ordered baked Virginia ham and hominy grits. Black-eyed peas, cornbread. Now, you know what I ordered. You're a southern boy. Texas, sir. That's close enough. Have you tried closing your eyes, sir? Eyes closed or eyes open, it's still SOS, Major. <laughs> You can't ignore it. You can't disguise it. You can't escape it. It's the one mutual nightmare we'll all take out of this war. <laughs> Come on in. Colonel Reed, sir. There's a German officer out here from the unit at Hostile. All right, show him in here, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Well, maybe I'll offer him some of this stuff. We can see how tough those Germans really are. They might accuse us of germ warfare, sir. Drop him down, officer. Danoff, I'm pleased you accepted my invitation. This is Major Hoffman. I believe a talk between us can be of mutual benefit. Please sit down. I'm going on with my supper, if you don't mind. You're most welcome to join me. No, thank you, sir. Mm. I, um... I understand you have a large number of Allied prisoners in hostile. Yes, sir. Mostly French and English. Well, I'm interested in liberating those prisoners. I wonder if you and I couldn't make ourselves a little deal. A deal, Colonel Reed? I'm assuming your men would rather surrender to us than to the Russians. And my proposition is very simple. If your garrison will surrender peaceably, we will move into hostile, and the Russians will have no chance to call on you. You will bring us out of Czechoslovakia? As American prisoners of war. With our wives, our possessions. I'll be as generous as I can under the conditions at the time. I'll explain it to my men. But they may want more assurances. Cannot haggle, Captain. I got no assurances up my sleeve. Well, I believe my men will cooperate. I have your promise, Colonel, that under favorable conditions... Your wives will be brought out with you. I can't say about possessions. We 
we'll move into hostile within the next 48 hours. You're wise to move quickly. The Russians are not far away. Captain Danoff, uh, you have some horses in hostile. Yes, a treasure of horses, Major. Perhaps the finest collection in history. Hmm. We're interested. I shall see you next in hostile. Good night, Captain Danoff. Major Hoffman, would you ask Captain Loring and Lieutenant Powell to come in here, please? Yes, sir. Operation Cowboy will get underway at 0500 hours.
Well, it looks harmless enough. Unless they got something tucked away in those buildings. I'd sure like to know how that SS unit found out we were going to cross the border this morning. Find out they did. We'll proceed, but with caution. Weapons ready. As acting commander of the hostile garrison, I hereby surrender my troops and equipment, according to the terms of our agreement. We are your prisoners, Colonel. For my part, that agreement will be faithfully followed, Captain Danhoff. I'll inspect the post and the prisoners. Lieutenant Berger, lead the way. Yes, sir. Captain Loring, you're in charge here. We were expected at the border this morning. I know. An officer from this garrison anticipated our agreement and left here before my return last night to inform the SS. His action was insubordinate. We'll discuss responsibility later, Captain. I'm confident your consideration will be fair, Colonel. Fair and cautious. Of course. Uh, may I suggest that you return across the border as soon as possible? The SS will certainly reorganize, and my latest reports inform me of substantial Russian advances. We don't tend to vacation in hostile, Captain. <laughs> more or less. 600 on Cossack horses, 100 of the best Arabians in all of Europe, and over 100 Libizaners. Captain Danhoff, we're particularly interested in the Libizaners. Are you thinking of taking them back with you? That's right. I can help you pick them out from the rest, but it will take time. If you had let me know last night, but you didn't want to ask favors. Not last night. Major Hoffman, do you come from that part of Texas where they still know how to ride a horse? Yes, sir. Why do you say we have ourselves a roundup? Sir? A big roundup. We haven't got time to pick out the ones we want. Let's take them all. Right, sir. You're in charge. Uh, Colonel, I know these horses. I could be of very real assistance to the American Army, not only here, but in Austria. Captain Danhoff. I suggest you be a very real assistance. And then we'll discuss your future. <clears throat>
Well, sir, this is a war story we can tell our grandchildren about. Yeah. Tell that behind our back. Tell all the friends you should have heard the whopper granddaddy told last night. <laughs> Cowboy, this is schoolhouse. Cowboy, this is schoolhouse. Over. Cowboy, this is schoolhouse. Cowboy, this is schoolhouse. Over. Why don't we hear something? Be patient, Otto. You remind me of someone. They had trouble at the border. Maybe there's trouble at Ostar as well. I read you, cowboy. Over. Roger, out. Tell the stallions I said for them to just sit tight. Their girlfriends are on the way. When do we reach the border? Are we close? Hey, we're there. Are you sure? Where are my horses? Hey, is that maybe what you're looking for? suppose they crossed the Lippus and mares with other horses. It's been a long war. familiar to me, Colonel. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. My brother rode a horse named Podaisky. The uh, <laughs> captain of the American Olympic team was so impressed when he saw you ride in 1936 that he named a horse at Fort Riley after you. I'm complimented. Yeah, my brother won several jumping meets on Podaisky. Well, there are your horses, Colonel, and a few extras thrown in. Colonel, shall we get busy? since last night. But we don't even know whether they reached the border. I can't raise a living soul on this thing. Would you like some fudge? I got a box from the States. Well, thank you. It's stale, but it's the best stale fudge I ever tasted. It's time. What, what is it? The stallions are wait, here. Wait, no, wait, no. Slow down. Slow down. What are you trying to say? The stallions, the mares. You're right. They're here! Heavyweight, this is schoolhouse. Heavyweight, this is schoolhouse. Over. Hey! Hey! You can forget that. The stallion said to tell you to sit tight. Their girlfriends are just over the hill.
Why, Verena, what kind of welcome is this with tears? Take no notice. I have tears left over from all the times I haven't dared cry. You get them now on all occasions. Spanish Riding School remained in exile. Then in 1955, occupation forces left Austria. And on the 220th anniversary of the Riding Hall, the White Horses performed once more in Vienna.
ending for me. These horses wouldn't be here today. Yes, I saved them. You know, I saved the Spanish riding school during the war. How did you do that, Grandpa? It was at Linz, when the bombings were so heavy. I was facing death every day. 